Nowadays, it's a big debate about whether or not college is worth it, especially with people going into fields after graduation that have no relation to their studies. Regardless, it is still, it is still expected of people to go to college to improve their chances at entering their chosen profession. My major was music. Music is generally looked down upon by American society. They say that us artists should grow up because this is the real world and we need a real job in order to make real money. In my intro to songwriting class, I was given an assignment to write a piece that did not have predictable rhymes. I wrote mine about not being accepted based off of a personal decision, which in my case was my music major. It goes like this. I wish that I could have a wish granted for all the time someone couldn't understand it. I am no doctor, music was an option, so I opted. My mom is my biggest fan, like autographs and backstage passes. My dad's why I started, it's in my jeans without the pocket. I don't live my life to please the people who keep asking. Why's your major music? You know you can't make it happen. Choose something secure, you could climb up the corporate ladder. Ditch the risk and you'll be on a road like speaking Spanish. I spoke on my music plans in my youth, all they do is laugh. That's uncles, cousins, my teachers, and half the dudes in my class. My teacher starts probably mad that she's black. And she thinks average, because all we dream of is rapping or sports, football or basket. Well, why could they not approach it as she could be a great poet and my job as a teacher is to help her grow and hone it faster, but not a chance. All I got was frozen glances, cold as an avalanche, but by now I know that they're ashes. Thank you, thank you. Now it continues after that, but the gist is pretty apparent within the first 16 bars. American society doesn't easily acknowledge the fact that Dr. Dre, Diddy, Jay-Z, Paul McCartney are all worth over a billion dollars. A Pablo Picasso painting can go for about 200 million or more. But regardless of the million and billion dollar examples I've given, there's every imaginable income level below that. But the low and mid-level breadwinners don't get much recognition. Now, being an artist, I know that it can be hard to find work. But it could also be hard to find work if I had chosen medical school. And it could also be equally as hard to find work if I had chosen law school. So with that, I often wonder why we don't move away from the concept of finding jobs and into the concept of creating jobs. College has taught me a few things. A few things, of course, being an understatement, is college. <laughs> but my professors taught through case studies. And within those case studies, I would like to say I learned over a thousand ways to make money. Of course, about 50% of those were blatantly mentioned in the text, and the others were open to interpretation. In my senior seminar class, I was given three capstone projects to complete in which we were able to choose our own topics. My first capstone project was a digital drum kit in which I designed by sampling a bag of children's toys. My second capstone project was a digital preset bank for a synthesizer called Europa. And my third capstone project was a digital course on drum synthesis accessible via MP4 downloads. I know that sounds like gibberish to all of you right now. <laughs> but using those three capstone projects, I was able to create my proof of concept and successfully launch my business prior to college graduation. Thank you. After graduation, I was able to incorporate a social portion of my business because I wasn't so busy with exams and assignments. And I started teaching 
So with that, showed up in two forms. I was teaching, I am teaching youth electronic music production. I teach them how to record themselves. I teach them how to mix and master their music. On the other side of that, I'm teaching people upwards of about 65. So not only am I teaching them music production, but I'm teaching them how to use their computer. <laughs> and I'm teaching them how to use their camera so that I can see them. And I'm teaching them how to use their microphone so I'm not just cluelessly watching their lips move. I'm a terrible lip reader. So through my successes and failures in running my business, I've developed some guidelines that I use to proof my future concepts and ideas. And there are eight of them I would like to share with them, share them all with you today. One, find your passion and the rest will be fail proof. Skip the step and your line of work could be held to you. Two, think of needs you can fulfill with your skills, only outside the box, because typical positions are filled. Three, brainstorm products for digital consumption. The world is too big for us to visit every junction. Four, social interaction is still crucial. Relationships are important. Don't let the internet fool you. Five, you have to market if you want to make a profit. Consistency is the model. It applies to every topic. Six, every business concept is worth gold if you implement it right and your USP is its own. Seven, always put the end user first, give more value than you offer, and they'll grow to know your worth. Eight, take time to de-stress and refuel. Sometimes the ETA is faster when you plan a detour. That's all eight. Thank you. Now, given those eight steps, I would like to encourage college graduates, college dropouts, people who never attended college, everybody, to move away from the concept of only finding jobs and into the concept of creating jobs, as there's always a need to be fulfilled or a process to be optimized in fulfilling a need. I'm Bradley Jones, and I'm not 15, I'm 22, just a disclaimer. <laughs> also known as July, thank you for listening to my talk.